بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we are continuing this long series about the hereafter, the journey from this world through the hereafter and then to heaven or hell We ask Allah to grant us Jannah and to save us from hellfire and its punishments. Ameen. Today, inshallah, or tonight, in the beginning of the lecture, in the first 20 minutes or so, I'll be going backwards and forwards a little bit. So I might revisit some of the things we've already spoken about in the past lectures, only because I need to speak about other occurrences that happen on that day and different narrations. For the order in the way things are happening in the hereafter is not clear completely to the scholars. You would find sometimes something popping up in the Quran of something that will happen in the hereafter. Or in a hadith, this will happen. So there are a lot of occurrences that we don't know at which stage they will happen. But the general, the general uh, pattern or the, is that there will be the resurrection, followed by the intercession, followed by the, rece the um, receival of the books, followed by the accountabilities, hisab, followed by the scales, which will weigh the people's good deeds and bad deeds, followed by the crossing of that thin bridge above hellfire, followed by the awaiting at the doors of heaven. Included here is the whatever is owing to people um, between the believers and then to heaven or to hellfire and then that's another topic. So I'll be revisiting some of the things and going backwards and forwards a, a little bit just to make the picture clear to us insha'Allah. So this day, as Allah has told us in the Quran, is a day which is as long as an estimation of 50,000 years of what we count here on earth. في يوم الله سبحانه وتعالى says في يوم كان مقداره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة a day which is estimated in our days as 50,000 years. For all the judgments are going to be held, all the judgments have to be completed. There will be quarrels and arguments, denials, protests. This person took from me, I need my right. Blames. All of these have to be settled. In one ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when the criminals, when we say criminals, by the way, let me reiterate, criminals are not people who do illegal things of what man has made law. But they are the illegal things which Allah has made law. On that day are the criminals. When they enter hellfire, yuqsimul mujrimun. The, 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 the criminals will swear. In another verse, the best calculator among them will say, we, were, we, we, we lived on earth only but a day. So, the hereafter, the day of judgment, compared to the length of the time that we stay on earth, is so overwhelming that this whole, these years that a person lives here, no matter how long they've lived, will seem maybe like the feeling of a day or part of a day, as compared to what of the events and the time that will be on that day. Going back to the end of the hadith, about the Prophet's intercession, which I mentioned two weeks ago. The long hadith where the people will go from Prophet to Prophet, asking if Allah will begin the judgment, asking them to intercede. And each one of them will say, myself, myself, 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, finally, he says, Ana laha. I am the one qualified for it. He says, he prostrates to Allah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels descend. His angels descend, Allah descends. The manner in which Allah descends is unknown to us. Laysa kamithlihi shay. There's nothing like unto him and he sees all things and hears all things. Wahu was sami al basir. The manner in which the angels will descend is not like the manner of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we also don't understand the manner of their descension. And the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come down. Eight angels will be carrying it in accordance with the ayah in Surah al haqqa وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ ثَمَانِيَ On that day, eight angels will be carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Sahih Hadith, the Prophet ﷺ states in relation to the size of these angels, that one of them from the earlobe to the shoulder is like the distance of 700 years for a person riding on a horse very fast. He says, Allah will say, Ya Muhammad ﷺ, Lift your head and seek intercession, I will give you and ask for anything I will give you. And the Prophet ﷺ says, this is the part which I want to continue today. He says, I lift my head and I will say, O oh Lord, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. Then it will be said to me, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad ﷺ, you may allow to enter paradise those who have no accountability upon them from your Ummah, to enter from the right door of Jannah, specifically or especially. But they can choose to share to enter from any other door which other believers if the, will enter through if they wish. By the one who possesses my soul in his hands, the width of each door is like the distance between Mecca and Hajar. Hundreds of kilometers distance, the doors of paradise. So from the blessing and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these doors are so wide that they welcome a large number beyond our calculation. This hadith is narrated in Bukhari, Muslim and Tirmidhi. So the first among the people who will move along are the ones who, are, who believed, who are the believers from the ummah, from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not from the people of the prophets before, but from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to make us one of them. They will, end, they will pass and skip the day of judgment. They have no judgment upon them. There are few hadiths talking about these types of people who will not be judged at all. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us, which is in Bukhari and in Muslim, probably a few words difference. He said that 70,000 of my ummah will enter paradise without any judgment and without any punishment. 70,000. No judgment. No accountability and no punishment. No accountability because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all of his rights, all of his rights. And these people have not taken the rights of anyone. Allah forgives his rights. The rights of people he doesn't forgive. On that day it has to be dealt with in a different way. But these people, they have no rights owing to people. So Allah has forgiven him his rights. They have done no wrong to other people. And there is no major sin to be punished on. Rasul was asked, O oh, oh, Messenger of God, can you describe these people with, to us? We want to be one of them. And he said, in one hadith, it says, They are the ones who do not seek uh, a healing which. It was known in those days, al kay where you iron your skin in a certain way. A healing which is not a form of healing. And do not believe in superstitious beliefs. And they truly rely and depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the full meaning of that word. Now this requires a whole lecture to explain what it actually means. True reliance. The whole idea of this is that these people, they have done all the conditions of the, of the Islam. They have not harmed anybody. And they are... Obviously, enormous rewards, these people. But on top of that, on top of everything that everyone else does, all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ have done of jihad and fasting and prayers and everything, on top of all of that, these people have got this extra quality which has reached a level 
of which has reached a level of almost perfection which is the complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every way we can revisit this hadith one day but a companion stood up and he said ya rasulullah can you ask Allah to make me one of them he said you are one of them then a man stood up and said can I be one of them a messenger of Allah and he said sabaqaka ilayha ukasha the other companion's name is ukasha he said ukasha has beaten you to it meaning a rasul used to speak in a in a pleasant manner to the people he beat you to it doesn't mean that if you had asked before him you were going to get it it just means that it wasn't meant to be for you it's not meant to be for you and it was the will of Allah that he's going to get up and ask that question and I'm answering this that it wasn't meant to be for you you are you will not be among them but since you asked I'll answer it this way he beat you to it so in a pleasant way without harming his feelings our Rasul used to respond in such a manner In another hadith, 70,000 seemed a small amount to some companions. So the Prophet ﷺ added, وَثَلَاثُ حَثَيَاتٍ مِّنْ حَثَيَاتِ رَبِّي And three scoops of my Lord's scoops. How are these scoops? What is the manner of this scoop? Allahu A'lam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows. But these hadiths indicate that there could be a little bit more than 70,000. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these people who pass without judgment and without any punishment, they will pass all, this, all these trials, but they will not enter paradise straight away. They will pass the trials of the judgment day, the trials of the mizan, the scale, which we're going to talk about today, inshallah, the trial of passing across hellfire, the sirat, the thin bridge bestowed above it, but they will wait in a place outside the doors of Jannah. This is because of the many hadiths speaking about Sahih hadith that the Prophet وسلم, Muhammad وسلم, will be the first to be allowed to enter Jannah. And we're going to revisit these hadiths later on when we get to the topic about entering Jannah. Who will enter first and second and the types of people who will follow after that. But whoever passes through right then before the Prophet وسلم, has come then these people are awaiting Other people who will be awaiting, since we're on this topic, will be a people whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal. And we're going to talk about that when we're speaking about the scale today, tonight, inshallah. And other types of people that will be awaiting are people who had enough rewards, however, and they've passed, however, there are people they owe something to, but they are both believers. And these people are called Al-A'raf Combination of those whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal And another group Who are owing others something They will be stationed, they will be stopped On the sirat, on the bridge bestowed Or a little bit past it But somewhere around that area And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is interceding and these are the first to go. Among them who will be first to go as well without any punishment or judgment are people who died and Allah had forgiven all their sins. These are people who are martyrs who died in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the cause of truth believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the cause of good believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed in the Quran and these people if they have no rights people have rights upon them they will also be among those who will pass without punishment or judgment who will be the happiest due to the Prophet's intercession said so the Prophet has been interceding let's see who the happiest person of this intercession will be Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu this hadith is in Bukhari Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu states I asked the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day who will be the most joyful on that day when you intercede for us O messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you intercede and he replied I thought no one will ever this question will never occur to anyone to ask 
But the one who I assumed will ask one day, if any, it would have been you, Abu, Abu Huraira. And here you have asked it. He said, Whosoever says, La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship besides Allah, sincerely from their hearts, in his own conviction and self, will be, the most, will be among the most joyful of my intercession on that day. Meaning, that intercession, meaning their books will be received in their right. They'll be forgiven. They'll pass quick. They, so they're the most joyful in passing. There are not many obstacles in the ways of, this, of these people. And then the Prophet ﷺ was asked, What do you mean, whoever says the word La ilaha illallah with absolute conviction and sincerity in the self? He said, The ones who when they say it in their life, till death of course, that their belief in that word, when they say it, it prevents him from the forbidden things Allah has made. I don't mean that when you say La ilaha illallah at that moment it prevents you. It means that this person, the word La ilaha illallah, which they constantly say, they understand its meaning. And they say it clearly, sincerely from their heart, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So it involves taqwa. Protection from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust and honor and respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This word. And as a result, they acted upon that word, upon its meaning. If one says that Allah is worthy of worship, khalas, that's it. The whole life becomes a way that he tries or she tries to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. Even though Allah knows we sin sometimes. So the Prophet ﷺ said, He is the one who says, La ilaha illallah. And it is the major cause of preventing him or her from the forbidden things. Because they say, La ilaha illallah. It causes them to stop, stay away from forbidden things, from the haram. These types of people, Allah know who, knows who they are. And they will be the most joyous of the Prophet's intercession. We mentioned last week that after this intercession happens and the people without judgment or adab pass, suddenly the books are displayed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ When the suhuf, the records, the books will be displayed and spread. Nushirat, displayed and spread, spread out throughout the sky. In one hadith, it says that when the throne is carried by the eight angels, there will be a lawh al mahfuz the preserved tablets. Lawh al mahfuz Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from among Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's first creations, in which he wrote everything that will be till the end of time. All the deeds of every single individual on the face of the earth will be in that lawh al mahfuz It will be brought down. And everybody will see, every single person, Rasulullah said, every person standing that day will see their deeds clearly in there. Allah will guide them to see it. And then they will be taken out and placed into the books. Or books will be spread with that information in there. Books will be spread with that information in there. And people will receive it in their right, and others will receive it in their right, left, others will receive it behind their backs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْشُورًا اقْرَأْ كِتَابَكَ كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حَسِيبًا And every single person we have assigned his own records upon his neck. This is a metaphor. Upon his neck, meaning there is no running away from it. Upon your neck, meaning it is only about your deeds and nothing will escape it. And you will be judged and driven in accordance to what's in that records. So, every person will be held accountable in accordance with the book, the deeds which he has in that book. Unuqih. We will make them responsible, hanging from their neck, not literally, but they are responsible. And we will take out on the day, reveal a book. He will find it displayed before him. Every individual will find the book displayed before them. Allah will say, Iqra kitabak. Or it will be said by angels, read your book. 
كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حَسِيبًا Once you read your book, this is enough as accountability upon yourself. Once you read it, you will know everything. Everything's in there. Everything's in there. This book, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone will be commanded to read their book. And they will be able to read it whether they were literate or illiterate. They could read or can't read. Whatever language they spoke. If they were children or old, they will be able to read it on that day. Allah will give that ability to every person to read it and they will understand it very well. As people are reading their books, now remember when we say books, we mentioned in our last lectures, try not to imagine book like this. Books on that day, Allah knows what their nature, what their look is like. But they are records of information about you, about each one of us. As they are reading their records, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَبِيَضُّ وَتَسْوَدُّ On that day, faces will turn into beautiful bright light and other faces will be darkened into absolute darkness like charcoal. You could see their faces. As they're reading their books, faces are turning into nur and brightness and joy and faces are turning into misery and darkness and terror. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about some of the signs of terror on the criminals and the disbelievers. Now when we say criminals, this encompasses disbelievers and Muslims who were major sinners on this earth. Allah describes it in Surah Al-Kahf. As they're reading their book or receiving their records, this is the faces Signs on the faces on that day, people will see. Allah says, which means and on that day we will place the books it will be placed in the hands and then you will see the criminals their faces are full of terror because of what they have found in there and they will say scream out you will hear them on that day they will scream out you can imagine this picture now terrible faces faces full of terror and they are screaming out oh woe to us ya waylatana what's going to happen to me what's what kind of a book is this what kind of a book is this? It hasn't left out even the tiniest thing or even the biggest thing except that it preserved it and accounted it. It saved it up. Allah says, and, and, and thus they will find everything present there in reality without the exception of a single atom's worth, in other words. And your Lord will not victimize. Your Lord is, an, is not a victimizer to anyone. He doesn't oppress anyone. Allah does not victimize anyone. No matter how bad that person was or how good that person was. Angel or prophet, animal or jinn, it doesn't matter. In the tafsir it says that when they say, Ya waylatana, O oh, woe to us. Oh, what's going to happen to us? You know, in that language. Ya waylatana. It is only when they see the minor sins in their books. When they scream out, Ya waylatana, they look at it and the first thing they see are the minor sins. They haven't even seen the major sins yet. They say, Ya waylatana, when they see the minor sins. And this is narrated by Fudayl ibn Ayyad, one of the companions of the Prophet He says, they will say, Ya yeah, woe upon us when they see the minor sins. You can imagine now this. 
This is why the Prophet ﷺ used to tell us, my dear brothers and sisters, اتقوا محقرات الذنوب Protect yourselves from the sins that people take lightly. Protect yourselves from the sins which people take lightly. There are sins that we do, and people take them for granted, like they're light. Ah, it's just a minor sin, doesn't matter. So they accumulate them. And so these criminals will see in their records lots of accumulations of these minor sins. And as soon as they see them, the immediate response is, Oh, woe to us, what's going to happen? Oh, what's going to happen to us? Like that. The Prophet ﷺ told us about the minor sins. In another hadith, he says that the most of what causes, what causes the Muslims from among the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ to enter hellfire, in the beginning, when Allah says enter, heaven or hell, there will be people who will enter hellfire first. Now, from the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, said the, the, the most of what makes them enter are the sins which people used to take lightly. It makes sense. Because a, a Muslim knows that alcohol is a major sin. Abandoning prayer is a major sin. Uh, adultery is a major sin. Killing is a major sin. You know, it doesn't take a genius to know that. And we take heed, importance to that. Very rare do you find a Muslim who knows Allah well that would, take, that would not consider this a huge thing. But it's the minor things that we do. The light things. Ah, I'll just do it. It's just minor. It doesn't matter. Tomorrow I'll, pr I'll pray a few prayers tomorrow and it'll all go away. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way. We take them for granted until we accumulate them too much that even our good deeds won't catch up to them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that. Or some of us don't bother to make astighfar. Astaghfirullah, 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 which wipes it away. So we, because we, we, we take these sins lightly, we will also take the good deeds that will wipe them away lightly as well. We'll say, oh, alhamdulillah, I've, I've got enough good deeds. So we neglect the istighfar. And for example, if we asked ourselves this question here, each individual by themselves, how many times in the day do I ask God to forgive me from my heart? How many times do I say astaghfirullah al -Azim? Not for a particular sin, but just in general. Estimate how many times you say it and dedicate a time for it throughout the day. The Prophet wasallam said, some of the good things that person will find in their records on that day, he used to say, Tuba li wa man wajada fi sahifati his tirfaran kathira. Glad tidings, good news, congratulations to the one who on the day of judgment opens their records and finds in their records many instances of istighfar, many instances of repentance. That is among the best things people can find in their records on that day. Because when they say the istighfar, the sins in between, one istighfar to the next, are wiped off. You see it before your eyes, wiped away. Allah forgives them or He informs you. You have sought forgiveness from me and I am the one who forgives. You knew that you have a Lord that forgives. Watch your records. And He watches them wiped away. We ask Allah to make us among them. You see the sins wiped away. And some of the sins, not even the angels will be made to remember them. Allah will make the angels forget them. And He will make you forget them too. To the point where there are no more sins and then you are able to enter Jannah. Because no one enters Jannah with even atoms worth of sin. Allah forgives them before you enter it. But it is our deeds that will make them forgiven. It is our istighfar which makes them forgiven. The Prophet wasallam used to say, make istighfar, for wallahi I make it more than a hundred times a day. In another hadith, seventy times a day. Among the worst things that a person will find in their books when they are reading them, here are some of the worst things that a person will find in their books. Shirk. Making partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any shape, way or form. Brothers and sisters, don't take shirk lightly. For there are some of us who are used to cultural practices and we don't even know that they are shirk. Learn tawheed. Learn what the oneness of Allah really means. You are a muwahid. You are a monotheist. You say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So some people, they carry amulets around. And they believe that they can protect them. I don't know. In, in Pakistan, they call them nazar. In Turkish, they call them muskas. Or, or the, I don't know what else, they call the eye. In Arabic, we call them hijab. Or we call them uh, al-kharzi. Or we call them al-ayn, al-ayn al-zar'a. Al 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 al
Why are you knocking on wood to protect you from what? This is a, a practice of polytheism. Okay, all these different things are actually shirk, my dear brothers and sisters. It's important for us to learn what monotheism means if we claim to be monotheists. Among the worst things that you'll find in your book are the major sins. Learn what the major sins are. Among the major sins, Prophet ﷺ told us, be aware of the seven destructive sins. These are among the major sins, such as murder, slandering a chaste woman, a woman that is pure, and saying that she is a dirty woman. Uh, riba, usury, interest, when, you don't, when there is no necessity for it. Magic and sorcery. And there are many other major sins that a person should avoid. And if they do can practice them, they should repent sincerely from their heart in this life before they die. Because then it will be in their records. And it will be upon them on their necks. Also among the worst things you'll find in your book, leaving out or lacking in compulsory duties. We know what the compulsory things are, the fard, the five pillars of Islam, for example. And there are other compulsory things we know about them. We, when we abandon them or take, heat, you know, um, take them for granted, these are among the worst things that a person doesn't want to read in their books. If the, if the mujrimun, the criminals will say, Ya waylatana, on the minor sins, what is left for the major sins? Now, these are the, among the most worst things that a person sees. Among the most regretful, regretful things, like you regret and say, Oh, I wish I had gone back, and, that you will find in your book, are uh, time wasted, youth wasted, health wasted. You will say, I had my health, but I didn't use it for good. I had my time. Look, here, I didn't use it. Oh, if only I'd used that time, I could have said, Subhanakallahum, or Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al-Azim, or La ilaha illallah, in that time, it would have earned me so much today, and I would have wiped out so many sins which I don't want to see today. So time, health and youth. Among the best things that a person will see in their book, as we mentioned before, lots of repentance. Mercy to others. When you have done merciful things to other people. And among the first that you can give mercy to, I, I, I speak to the men first, is your wife and your children. For they are the first entrusted to you, taken away from their fathers and given to you. You don't need to be a leader of a country. You are in charge of, that, you, you are in charge of the affairs of that wife and you must monitor her affairs and look after it and stand up firm in looking after her and, educate, and teaching her and allowing her uh, peace and harmony in your home and respecting her and, and so on and so forth. And not leading her into haram and so on and so forth. Second, the wife to her children and also her duties to her husband. Mercy. Mercy to those who are weaker than you and Allah has entrusted them to you, including the animals. Wallahi al-Azim. These are among the best things you can see in your records. Also, dutifulness to parents is among the best things that a person loves to see in their records. For they are the two doors to paradise, Rasul said. Compulsory acts, to see that you have completed your compulsory acts. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is nothing more beloved to me than the compulsory acts which I have made upon my servants. Voluntary worship. When you see voluntary worship, these are among the most joyous things you see because when you have lacked in your compulsory worship, the voluntary worship patches it up and completes it for you. So imagine you find that you've lacked in your compulsory worship but there's no voluntary worship in your records. You say, what's going to complete it for me? It's lacking. But the voluntary worship completes your compulsory worship which you've lacked in. Other things are when you've helped relieve another believer's hardship and goodness towards others. You will also love to see these things because the Prophet ﷺ said, when a person, if a person relieves another believer from a hardship in this life, Allah will relieve him from a hardship in the hereafter. You would read your records and you will see, uh oh, this is going to lead me to a hardship next. You see, you haven't gone yet, you're just reading the records now. This is going to lead me. I wish I can find something that will get rid of this. You find that in your records you've helped someone. And so you calm down. The angels will say, Calm down. You have helped him. Allah will say, wipe it off. I'm going to help him today. 
before he helped, helped his brother, and so on. These are among the few things which you see are the best things that you see in your records, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Now I'd like to revisit something else. The first thing, the first things that we will be judged on, as soon as the records are given on that day, the hisab begins, the accountability. Some people, they see their records in front of them, but there is no quarrel. These are the believers who will be entering Jannah, inshallah. And there are, the second category are the people who will see their records and then quarrel their records. They will deny things. They will question things. And these people, they will be punished somehow. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, so among the first things that Allah will question the people about from within their records is prayer and murder. Prayer first among your actions. Murder among the people's rights. That's if there is need to question it. So a believer looks at his records and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, I'll read the hadith actually for you. Abu Dawood, in Sahih, hadith Sahih, he says, that the Prophet ﷺ said, The first thing to be accounted for of the servant's actions is prayer. Our Lord will say to the angels, Look at my servant's prayers, if they are completed or if they are lacking. If the prayers are completed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the angels, Then write it as complete. And if it is lacking, incomplete, He will say to them, Look if my servants have any voluntary prayers. If he has voluntary prayers, Allah will say to them, Complete my servants' compulsory prayers by adding these voluntary prayers on top. And so his actions will be judged upon in general as if that's what it originally was. So the hisab will start after Allah asks the, uh, uh, the angels and he knows, of course, does he have any voluntary prayers? to complete what he has lacked in his compulsory prayers. Yes, it will complete it. And then he will not be judged about the prayer anymore. But if the prayer is lacking, or missed, or neglected, especially if they are missed, there is nothing that can compensate for the missed prayers. What covers with the, of the compulsory prayers when it's lacking is when you have prayed your farad prayers, but you prayed them, for example, hastily, quickly. You don't remember what you said. Or you, you prayed them in a way that part, part of it was, was not valid. Right? Or you didn't have khushu' in there, no concentration. Right? Or you were thinking about worldly things too much. Or you weren't practicing all the sunnahs in the prayer. You were lacking some of the, act uh, the actions of the sunnahs in the prayers. Like inside the prayer. Then the voluntary prayers, they complete that prayer. Because the compulsory prayers, they come up in a certain level. If they are perfect, that's good. Halfway, still accepted. But the voluntary prayers can complete it. If they are not good, or if they are neglected, or there is nothing to compensate them, then that's what the servant will be asked about. As-salah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, amali. If it is good, then the rest of the rest of his actions are good. They're going to be good. وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ سَائِرُ عَمَلِهِ If it is corrupt and, and, and bad, then the rest of his actions are going to be corrupt and bad. وَلَيَّعْذُ بِاللَّهِ Murder. Did you murder an innocent person? Or did you have a right to murder this person? And there is also something else that will be done over here. That the, the, the good deeds of, 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 of that person, even if he was a believer, will be taken off and given equivalent to what that murder is worth to compensate the victim. So you'll lose your rewards. Some people won't have any rewards left. And so the, de the bad deeds, the sins of the other, of the victim will be, ta will be taken off him and placed on yours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فخلف من بعدهم خلف أضاعوا الصلاة واتبعوا الشهوات فسوف يلقون غيا. Allah says, and so there came a generation after the prophets 
who began to follow their lusts and temptations and neglect their prayers, these will surely meet غَيَّ a terrible misery and wrath. We ask Allah to save us from that. Another thing that a person should watch out for on that day is that if in his records he finds or she finds that there were moments in their life where they saw something wrong, people doing wrong things in their house, outside their house, places where they were able to change, but they didn't change. And they were able to change it with wisdom, but they didn't change it even with that. The hadith of Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will surely question the servant on the day of judgment that when he saw a wrong, why he didn't attempt to make a change to the wrong when he saw it. And he will reply, O oh my Lord, I hoped in you and I feared the people. Ibn Majah, and it's Sahih. In another hadith says, you, Allah will say to them, you feared the people, but you didn't fear me. In other words, there are ways of changing the wrong, of course. And it has to be done with wisdom. And you have to un have knowledge about the wrong first to know that it's wrong. You don't just assume that it's wrong and... and, and turn against the people and the manner that we teach the people also has to be done with wisdom but the point is when a person is able to change the wrong and it's definitely a wrong and the person doesn't try to do something about it in one way or another then they'll be questioned on that day here the hadith stopped will they be punished or will they be forgiven Allah only knows Amruhu ilallah we say his matter is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's be on the safe side Anyway, so at this point, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone is being judged. The books are handed over. People reading and bursting with nur. Others reading and their faces darkened till they look charcoal. Some are being driven away to the next stance, to the next position, to the ne whatever's going to come next. And others are left to argue their cases. This is the state now. What is important to note here is... No one will want to know their relatives, their friends, their ties, their wives, their husbands, their children, their parents. No one wants to know any of them on that day. Afraid that they might come asking for their hasanat or that they had wronged them in some way in this life. You don't want to know any of your relatives. You don't want to know any of your best friends. You don't want to know the most beloved people to you. You want to stay away from them. Because you're afraid of two things. Either you've wronged them in some way, and they're going to take some of your hasanat, or they're going to come asking you for your hasanat, and you can't give them even one. Allah says in the Quran, فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ On that day, people will deny any relationship to anyone else. They don't want it. وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ They don't even want to ask about them. Everyone's only concerned about themselves. In one hadith it says that a child, a son will come looking for his father and he'll say to him, Dad, if you love me in this life, I need one hasana, one to save me. And the father will say to him, Son, I loved you, but I need this hasana myself. The father will come to a son and he'll say to him, Was I not a good father to you? Did I not raise you? Did I not this? Did I not that? And he will say, Yes, yes, my dad, you did all this. He said, Give me one hasana, I need just one. That's all I ask you today. And the son will say, My father, I can't do that. Aisha radiallahu anha was once, the Prophet's head, the cheek was on her lap one day. And she cried. She cried radiallahu anha until her tear fell on the Prophet's cheek. The Prophet looked up and he asked her, Malaki ya Aisha, what's wrong, Aisha? And she said, I remembered the hereafter, the day of judgment. Will loved ones remember each other on that day? And he said, he, he was lying down, then he sat up. And he said, Ya Aisha, there are three moments on the day of judgment where no one will remember anyone else except themselves. When they receive their books, when the scale is brought, and when they are going to cross over hellfire to make it across. No one will remember anyone else. The animals will be judged. And this is already covered. Straight after the animals are judged, my dear brothers and sisters, and they are turned into soil, 
before they turned into soul, they prostrate to Allah. And the angels say, you weren't created to worship, so why are you prostrating? And they will say, we are prostrating to Allah, thanking Him that He, he did not create us as humans. And the angels will say to them, Allah did not bring you out this day except to take back the rights that you have against each other and also so that you may see the bad human beings so that they may feel the humiliation when they see you turned into soil. And this is the ayah in the Quran. The disbeliever will say, Ya laytani kuntu turaba. I wish I was turned into soil like an animal. After the animals are judged, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question the disbelievers if their prophets had informed them. And so the prophets begin to be questioned. And the people will deny that their prophets informed them. So who will bear witness for the prophets when their people denied them in that they fulfilled their mission on the day of judgment? Guess who? It will be the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will be us. Allah tells us this in the Quran. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدٌ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And so we have made you a balanced ummah. You will be witness against the, the, the other nations on the Day of Judgment and your Prophet Muhammad will be a witness against you. The Prophets will say, Allah will ask the people, did your Prophets come to you with the message and fulfill it? They will say, no. The bad people. And then Allah will ask the Prophets, what proof do you have that you fulfilled your mission? They say, Oh, our Lord, we fulfilled our mission. And our witness is the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam. So we are brought. And Allah will ask us, Do you bear witness that the Prophets have fulfilled their mission? And we will all say, Yes, our Lord. And He will say, What proof do you have? And they will say, You sent to us a Prophet named Muhammad wasallam, And you informed us in your book. And then the Prophet wasallam is brought to be a witness against all of his Ummah and the rest of the prophets. Then, my dear brothers and sisters, this is when, after this judgment of the books and the records and the quarrels and all of that happens, the next position, people are moved on, bit by bit, some before others, to the next major position, which is the scale. The good deeds and the bad deeds are brought from the book. Some of them have been wiped away. Some of them have been multiplied. Some sins have been wiped away. Some deeds have been multiplied. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dealt with what needs to be dealt with. Except for the rights of people. These are only the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they're sifted away, you see. Partially sifted away. And altered a little bit. And they are placed on the scale. The good deeds and the bad deeds. Allah says in the Quran, ونضع الموازين القسط ليوم القيامة فلا تظلم نفس شيئا وإن كان مثقال حبة من خردل أتينا بها أتينا بها وكفى بنا حاسبين And we will bring the scales to justice on the Day of Judgment. And no soul will be, heart, will be victimized in any way. And if it is were, were the size of a mustard seed of deed, we will bring it and place it on the scale. And this is enough sufficient injustice in the way we will hold people accountable, accountable to their deeds. Allah says, Those whose scales, good deeds, are heavier than the bad deeds, then he will automatically, very quickly, be in a blessed, in a blessed life in Jannah. And as for those whose scales are not enough, then their umm, their mother, will be hellfire. The one that will make them fall. Al umm, umm, mother, the one that will encompass them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us and to make our scales heavy. Jazakumullah khair. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.